Thank you very much. Next up is Congresswoman Titus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I want you to know that in Nevada, we share your enthusiasm for uh, the funding that is going into infrastructure. I just point out a couple of things that we're doing. We got $2.5 billion for our roads and highways, $225 million to fix our falling down bridges, $100 million for our high speed Nevada initiative for uh, connecting with the internet, and $5.5 million for EV charging stations. That put a lot of people to work, or it will, and it uh, will help us to uh, grow and develop. And we invite you to come out and see any of those projects in the works. You know, we had the highest unemployment in the country at 35%, but we're recovering now at a rapid rate thanks to investments like this. So I hope we'll see you in Nevada. My question, though, I'd like to go back to the, uh, my colleague from Phoenix to talk about inner city passenger rail. I want to just be sure I understand how that partnership grant program is going to work. So much of the investment in rail goes to the Northeast Corridor, but we need to invest in the Southwest as well. They need improvement. We need uh, greater availability. So I want to be sure that this would enable a public entity like Nevada to apply for the grant in partnership with a private uh, inner city passenger rail company. Second, what's the timing for when that application will occur? And third, will you help us and work with me to see that regional uh, impact as opposed to just local impact plays a role in the determination of who gets those grants? Thank you. Uh, to take the last question first, uh, we certainly uh, want to think about the, the regional effect and how any given vision for expanding passenger rail fits into an overall vision for uh, a first-rate uh, passenger rail network serving the entire country. And I know there's a great deal of interest in this in, uh, in the region you represent. Uh, I want to emphasize that under the annual funding of the partnership, uh, the, the state-federal partnership, which gets uh, $36 billion in advance appropriation over the next five years, uh, that uh, not more than $24 billion can be provided to projects that are in the Northeast Corridor. So we, we understand and, and share uh, the goal of Congress to make sure that uh, no one region monopolizes the, the funding. Uh, right now, FRA is working through the applications for the fiscal year 2021 partnership funding, uh, but will uh, later this year be able to uh, uh, make the funding available for the fiscal year 22. Um, they issued uh, just a, a few weeks ago in late June the notice of approach to developing the NEC inventory. Uh, but uh, again, the non-NEC program uh, will be made clear. Um, the parameters of that will be made clear later on this year. And uh, uh, we certainly welcome the opportunity to uh, work with you and, and work with a project sponsor for, from your region on how to provide uh, service where it uh, could have a very big impact. You know, if you look at I-15 from Los Angeles to Las Vegas on the weekend, it's like a parking lot going one direction or the other. We believe a speed train along that same corridor would carry people in both directions. Uh, it wouldn't just be a gambler's train. People would go south uh, on the train to, to Los Angeles, could become a commuter train. It gets cars off the road and improves the air quality. Uh, it would just, we've been studying this for a long time and we're close to making some progress. So we hope to work with you and see that that happens. And I thank you very much. You'll come you. out there for the groundbreaking. How about that? We'd love it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you.